Your, saying. your skeletons are showing up to your shows. Oh my God, that was tremendous. <laughs> no, no. First of all, I was. A, it's so weird how I put it up on face. I put it up on Twitter today. Facebook can handle it. I put it up on my Twitter. <laughs> I was and like, Instagram, "What is this real?" And I'm really happy he showed up. When we hugged, we hugged for about four minutes, and without communicating, he I said could hear what he out. was telling me. Mm-hmm. And, I, and we're talking about the guy kidnapped in 87. He showed up to the shows this last weekend in Tucson, which the shows were great in Tucson and Vegas. Thank you if you came out to this Treasure Island. But the Fox D, they, I've been trying to get him to shows in Tempe because he lives in Tucson. Yeah. And he always tells me, I'll come. But he's got a sick mom. Oh. And I don't think he ever really dealt with it. Well, this weekend I was in his backyard. He couldn't get out of it. Yeah. When I got there, I'm surprised he didn't call to do dinner. So when I got to the show, I said, you know what? Now we know the truth. He doesn't want to see me. I don't blame him. Yeah. And right after the show ended, guy came up to me and says, Kent Bell is here to see you. And I was so happy. And I almost, and when he, I first saw him, I almost was driven to tears. Mm-hmm. And then I hugged him. And we didn't have to say nothing. nothing Isn't that amazing? I could feel what he was telling me. And I know what I was telling him. Yep. You know, you don't have to fucking write it on Twitter or no, put it down. No, no. Nobody needs to see it. And it was, uh, I you know, I said, I'm sorry for what I did. It was really douchey. And, you know, he was like, I put myself in that position. You know, Wow. You know, I could feel it in his body, what he was. Yeah. Then Accountability. We, talked, we talked about, you know, what happened to us over the years, who he still spoke to. It was very, he's a really interesting guy. What is he doing now? He sells solar panels. Wow. Like he's a manager at a solar panel place. That's the future. Got, he was always a great salesman. Yeah. He was just lost just like I was. And he was hanging out with a crew that you had to make a certain amount of dough. Like you, at like a limit. He was hanging out with a crew that they're your friends and they'll cover for you. But you want to cover for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you want to go out At with the them from time the to time yeah. and go, Joey, let me put... And yeah, they, w- they would never, ever, but to be part of that crew, you had to have a BMW. Wow. You know, their father owned the BMW deal. So all the kids had That's BMWs. That's a lot of pressure. So he, had, he came from the other side of Boulder. You know what I'm saying? He hung out with these kids. He hung out with Jill Goodacre. Who the fuck is Joe Goodacre? She's, Jill Goodacre is married to Harry Connick oh, Jr. Oh, Jill Goodacre. Jill Goodacre is from Boulder. Like the wrong side of the tracks? No, no, no. In She's from the right side of the mm. tracks in Boulder. She got hired for Victoria's Secret out of Boulder. And let me tell you something. She went to the same high school. I think it's Fairview, it was called. Mm-hmm. And that's who sent out the Call Brothers into the NFL. Kevin Call was an outstanding offensive lineman for the Baltimore Courts for years, all pro. That high school had something. Wow. And this kid came from that whole wishy washy thing. And we sold cars at a place called Bill Crouch Subarus. I had worked at this dealer as a car washer for this body shop. Yeah. And all they did was cars from these this group called the Crouch Car Group. At that time, they had Honda, Subaru, Lexus. They had a couple different uh, chains of cars. Mazda. They had a couple different Boulder things. And I washed cars from them. But whenever I would drop them off at a particular dealer, the guy would always go, bro. When are you going to quit washing cars and sell fucking cars? <laughs> You're killing yourself out to two hundred dollars a week. Yeah, seriously. You a, they, were you all would... from, they were all gangsters from Jersey. The guy's name was Peter Pinto. Peter Pinto? Yeah. So he kept what? bugging me, bugging me, <laughs> until one day he was short on salesman. And he said, hey, Monday, I want to see you at 8 o'clock. I didn't know what to do. On a Saturday morning, I dropped off a car, and he goes, I'm short salesman, Monday. Just show time. up. And I had to call the body shop Monday morning and go, I can't come in there. I'll be in there tomorrow. And I went there on my first day. I read the pamphlets. And I went up there and sold three cars the first No, day. you did not. Fuck yeah. And I went and borrowed 500 from my so-called mother-in-law and bought two suits and two white shirts. And I quit the body shop. And I went to work at this Bill Crouch Subaru. And I put my head to the ground stone. The first month, I made like 7000 I was snorting coke. Can you imagine? I was imagine? going to Coco's. I was eating fucking, fucking tremendous. I, I, I bought more suits. And the second month, I went in there and sold like 16 fucking cars. And got like $4,000 in cash bonuses. Then I went in the third month and sold another 16 cars. 
Oh, I made another like ten thousand dollars in the fourth month. Guess what happened? You sold more cars. I met, no, I got smart. You started stealing. No, I got stupid. <laughs> I got too smart. When you want to be a good salesman, you don't know that. What'd Shut you? your mouth. I don't know. How much for the car? I don't know. I gotta ask my manager. How much? I don't know. What's the weight? I don't know. You're selling. Some. Then when you get cocky, you think you know everything, and you go oh. away from the game plan. Oh, so yeah. So the fourth month, I fell on my face, and I couldn't handle the rejection. So I quit like a pussy. But that guy, Kent Vela, worked over there with a dude named Carlos Valverde, a string of fucking killer salesmen. <laughs> they were killers, bro. <laughs> they would manipulate your mind so you couldn't sell cars. Really? Oh, yeah, that's the number one Like, thing. so they would sell so, more? Yeah. So Sharks. You're, so if you're a good salesman, they'll come up to you. Let's fuck with Lee today. Go, Jesse. What's yeah, that? I, I, don't, I don't know about working at this place anymore. Yeah, no. This place sucks. You doing okay, and Lee? We, it's called pissing on your leg. So we piss on your leg, and then Jesse May leaves, and I come over and piss on your leg for a little while. And it's called cracking you, talking about sad things. A puppy got hit by a car Jesus. today. And sometimes it backfires on you because then you get sad. But if you know how to... <laughs> <laughs> it's called pissing on somebody's leg and you piss on their leg until you get them out of the game so that's one less guy I gotta worry about Jesus so that's you, terrible so it's you and me against the world he's at home grieving about some fucking about the, dog, the dead dog yeah about the guy who got hit with a wheelchair he got they hit him with a ukulele 15 times it's hysterical so we get him out of the game these guys were professional torture chambers they were anything to get your mind out of the game so they could sell they call, come up to you, like if they saw a, sale, a guy on the lot, they come up to you and go, the manager wants to see you. And then you go in and see the manager, what's and up? And then they, they'd bite. He I don't want to see you. And he went and got the up. That's why you had to stay on your ground. I learned, you learn a lot by selling Yeah. Cars. So when I went there, there was this dude, Carlos Valverde, good looking dude from Boston. I didn't know he was on heroin. The whole time? Yeah, he was on heroin. That, was, is that how he would sell? He would sell on heroin, and he had lunch time. He always disappeared. And then one day, the cops came and told us they arrested him for bank robbery. He had robbed six banks in the area, oh. or something to that effect. Jeez. This place was fucking wild. This place had like eight salesmen. Sounds like a show. Two of them were cool, like legit white people. The other six were all ex-cons. I feel like ex-cons would be the best best salesmen. So I quit there because my ego couldn't take it. And I went to Chrysler Plymouth. And I met a Jew named Art Pressler. That was a badass fucking Jew. And he knew how to sell. But he, <laughs> but he sold Coke, too. Uh, and, while he was selling cars? Oh, yeah. So it would it be in the guys. trunk? No, he would just sell it from his desk. So there wow. Would be, there'd be four salesmen there. And I learned how to fucking... That's where I learned how to piss on people's legs. The top salesman, he had his favorite pen. It was a Red Cross pen. So when he saw it up, he would run out there and talk to the up, and right when he went to sell the car, he'd bring him in. I'd steal the red pen and fuck up his whole day. <clears throat> and then he'd be looking, "Where's my lucky red pen? Where's my lucky red pen? Fuck! Where's my lucky?" He'd be looking on the cars. It would break him. It would break him. He'd have to go home. A and pen? I would take his. It would take him out of his game. So. I mean, if a pen's taking you out of the game, were you ever so in the I game? Would, oh my god! And then again, he would get an up. I'd steal his pen. This went on. I worked there for maybe five months. And you put it back? Would you just put it back? No, like... I stole. I stole them. I got them for about 30, maybe 31 pens. Wow. When I, I put them all on a rubber band, and they had those inverted ceilings. Yeah. And I put them in the ceiling. And the day I quit, I gave him all the pens <gasps> back. And he was like, you motherfucker. I've been looking all over for these. I had that dealership. It was called Hollister Chrysler Plymouth. Let me tell you how much of a slime ball I was. I had the keys to the soda machine. If things were bad, I'd just rob the soda machine all the quarters. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you get the keys? It was in the fucking secretary's desk, so I stole it and made duplicates. How do you get a key? Oh, Who my. Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? Oh, Joey Bananas? My. I told you, I would eat people live for lunch in those days. <laughs> Joey Bananas. You're the reason why they invented cameras. I've said it before. You are. You 100% Joey Diaz. You're the reason for security fucking cameras. Crazies. I 100%. I wholeheartedly I was out agree of with my that. Mind. So I, I was doing well at the Chrysler store. But the cocaine was killing me. It was too accessible. There was no more calling a guy. I would just have to go into work. Uh, sell a car at 11, and I'd fucking buy a gram of blow. How much was a gram of blow then? It was 100, but it was tremendous. He was getting good coke this hard. This <laughs> I don't even know how much a 100 this gram Jew, is now. This Jew was a bad motherfucker. He was a great salesman. He taught me how to sell really good. So now I was prepared to go back to Crouch with the killers. 
So I went back to Crouch in November. I went back November 1st. I started the month off straight. They gave me a car. I put them together for a car, a $1,000 advance, because I was good. Yeah. I went back to Crouch. And then one day I read, I'm reading the paper, like two days after I'm back at Crouch. I'm reading the paper <laughs> by the guy who fucking broke out of, the cops arrested him for a DUI. And while he was in police custody at the hospital, he broke away, broke into the pharmacy, stole several bags of pills and other unnamed drugs. And he jumped out the window and the cops caught him or something like that. And the next day, two days later, this kid comes on the lot. And his name is Kent Vella, and they go, Vella's coming back today. And he comes back, and he had stitches on his lip. And I go, what happened? He goes, I was the guy that was arrested. He had the handcuffs still on, like the red was around his wrist still. So he's telling me this whole story about how he broke out of the hospital, he stole the liquid cocaine, and he fucking drank it. I mean, this guy was nuts. I mean, you know, I was watching Scarface last night. It was on Sundance. And he says yeah. a line to Sosa. because I never fucked nobody over that didn't have it coming. I fucked him over, but he didn't have it coming to him. Right. He was just at a bad place at a bad time. Right. And this is after 32 years, what I've come up with, what I remember, who I was, the type of person. I mean, I'm telling you, I would steal the fucking soda machine. <laughs> like, I had 19 How much cash avenues. would you get out of there? The soda machine guy wouldn't take the money out. He would leave singles and dollars, and then he would turn them into hundreds. The first time I went in there, it was like $1,100. I couldn't believe what? it. What? I took like 200 then I came back two weeks later, and it was like 1300 I took another 200 It was crazy. So I was just duking them for hundreds, like an ATM. That's what I called it. My the ATM? ATM machine. <laughs> Would you ever take a can of Coke also? i take everything. Whatever I wanted in the morning. A couple sodas this for later. A Sprite and a, and a 200 So when I went back, he told me this, that he was the guy that had gotten arrested. And that his bail was high, and Gebhardt got him out, the guy who owned cars. He did. Yeah, the guy who owned the car dealership Whoa. bailed him out, but he was running on the bail. He goes, I'm running on the bail. I'm not doing time for that. They offered me four years. I'm not going to do it. So I go, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, I'm staying with this guy. <laughs> He's got two kilos of Coke. He's holding. But we have to do this quickly because the guy he's holding the Coke for is coming back to get it. The guy's name is Randy Chambers, his roommate. So... Right away, that lifted my curiosity. <laughs> you know what? I was in Boulder long enough. My friends were in New York having a good time. Yeah. They were doing eight balls. They were going to clubs. Here I am in this fucking town with these fucking Gentiles. <laughs> I had a nice girlfriend with a family. But this wasn't. I Not, wasn't really happy. That wasn't enough. I wanted, you needed to be almost dying, dying. and yeah, swimming like I in could, a pool of cocaine Like 7,000 wasn't enough and the <laughs> no. coke I was stealing and... Because you're chasing I, I had, something. I, would, I, lived with two, I lived in a house of three people. It was a four-bedroom house. And it was two guys, me, and a chick. And the chick was hot. She was a redhead. And she had a little part-time living boyfriend. But I'd get coked up at night and knock on her door, give her two lines, and we'd be working that little fat little red pussy. Shut up. I was a demon dog, dog. I mean, I was a demon. I mean, and I had a girlfriend. I was a demon. I mean, you know. <laughs> You're consuming, consuming, consuming. Consuming is what I did. Yep. I sold cars. You were a locust. So when he told me he was going to rob this guy, could I move the coke from him? He goes, can you move the two kilos from me? I'm like, absolutely. I got some guys in Aspen that will fucking take that off your hands quickly. And I called my guys in Aspen. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just going to rob this fucking guy. So I called my partner in crime from Jersey. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm just yeah. gonna rob this I'm gonna guy. broker this deal. I'm gonna broker. What am I like, broker? What am I doing? I shouldn't do this. You're what like, am I a fucking broker? I'm gonna do it myself. So I said, fuck it. I'm gonna call a friend of mine and I'm gonna fly him out here and we're gonna take this guy down to New Jersey style and then we'll go back to New Jersey and I'll leave this chick and I'm done with this life. I'm lying to myself. I'm not a car salesman. I'm a co dealer. I wanna go back with my friends, dog. I miss my friends. I missed. The life. Yeah, I missed all that craziness. I didn't want to do this shit. Insanity. I was 25 years old and I was dumb. My friends are going up to hunt the mountains, snorting coke every weekend, eating quaaludes. And I'm out here watching the Denver Broncos. Give me a fucking break. I don't want to be here. Making 10 grand a month, 7 grand a month. So I said, okay. And I went to a guy that I bought weed from and coke. And this guy was a fucking moron. Just a typical fucking moron. He had every accessory a loser could have. 
You know what I'm saying? Pinky Another ring? The jacket tattoo on the forearm where he rolled the jacket up so you could see oh, the tattoo. You know, this is 87, guys, way before the tattoo revolution. He had done time. He had tinted windows. He had a loud stereo. He had a fucking pit bull. Dude, He hung out at strip clubs. So far, he I'm, I'm, his hair. I'm eight yeah. for eight. He was just mm-hmm. a Myself. <laughs> but I bought drugs from him, so I went up to him. He said he ran with some bikers. I know some biker dudes. So I, I, I said, okay, I want to rob this dude. And he's like, okay, I'm in, blah, 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 blah. Now, his motivation for stealing, robbing this guy was completely different than mine. Yeah, what was his? His motivation was he had met a stripper that danced at a, at a nude place. Not even a topless place. A nude place. It was BYOB. The chick was tremendous. I saw her a couple times with him. She left her husband. And she was sleeping in his house now. Oh, man. He gave her his bed, and he slept on the couch. And he professed his love to her, but she told him she loved him also. Bullshit. But she was a Catholic. I'm, what? And for her to sleep with him. A stripper and then a Catholic? For her to sleep with him, he would. she would have to get a divorce. She didn't feel comfortable. It was against her religious beliefs. I mean, six hours ago, she had a snail trail so going much, down a pole. How much is your divorce? It was $10,000. And he needed the ten thousand. He was gonna rob this guy with me to give this girl the money. Pussy so powerful. So she could get a divorce and fuck him. Pussy is so powerful. She slept on his couch for six weeks. He slept on his couch. Because she was crazy. While she lived in the bedroom. Getting her life together, bringing other guys over there. You know, like just the guy was a fucking idiot. So I take him, I set him up. His mother owned a lot of real estate in Boulder. She was like a rental. And he said he had an open house. He goes, well, why don't you bring him over there and we'll rob him over there? So my plan was to fucking like to be real easy. My plan was to bring him over there, show him some cash, make him go back, get the coke, and when he came back, we just handcuffed him and put him on a bus. We gave him like two thousand dollars and said, "Get on a fucking bus. It's over for you. Don't don't come back or we'll shoot you." That was the original plan. I mean, that even sounds risky. That plan sounds risky too. Oh, it was horrible. So, and I was the setup guy. I'm the setup guy. I'm I mean, aren't you nervous thinking firm. about all that, like leading up to that moment? I'm, I'm shitting my pants just listening to the story. Listen, I didn't make it all this way because I didn't have balls of steel. I, I was know. stupid, and I had balls of fucking steel. But you can have balls of steel and also be apprehensive about that sort of At scenario. This point in my life, there was no apprehension. You weren't even thinking. I was 25, and I was chasing a lifestyle that didn't exist. Yep. I thought that this lifestyle would, it would include me in that club. Right. And that would, all that money was going to do was ruin me. Right. Which it did. That's all that money at that age would do. And so the, so you, you plan to meet this guy at the so house. I plan to meet this guy at 145 on November 18th, two, 1 o'clock at his house, and then drive him to the other guy's house, my partner in the kidnapping, tell him everything was kosher, and then do what I said, drive him back, Bring him back, do the exchange, tell him it was a ripoff. I'm getting ripped off also. Put some money in his pocket, my pocket. You know, drop me off on a corner, kick me out of the car, punch me in the mouth, make it look good. Make it look good. And then get rid of this guy in a fucking bus. That was the deal. No, I go to pick up the guy, I go upstairs. Right away when I get upstairs, he takes me into the room, you want a line? Yeah. He gives me a line of the Coke, and right when he opens the drawer, it's a grinder, and it's $2,000. And in the grinder was rocks, because in those days, the grinder, to grind up Coke, had yeah. a compartment that you could take the top off and put a lid on it, and you could hold a fucking half ounce in there. All right. So when he opened the grinder, there was fucking a half ounce in there. I saw it with my eyes. He took a rock out, we grinded it, we each did a line. And I can see the, I go, how much cash is that? He goes, 2000 He goes, I'm going to take that too. So he already had it planned. So I go, all right, let's go. Let's go over, take a sample from the roof. He took a rock out, and he was going to bring it to my guy. My guy whips out a fucking machine gun. And he's like, Joey, tie him up. And I'm like, this wasn't the plan, you dumb motherfucker. This wasn't the plan, you stupid fuck. So now I had to turn Joey on. So now I'm sitting here with the guy. He goes, I'll leave him with you, and I'll go over there and see what's over there. I, I grabbed Bella, and I, Bella didn't tell him where the kilos were, and neither did I. I go, it's over there somewhere. But there's money in the drawer, and there's coke in the fucking grinder. I didn't tell him how much. 
I wanted him to tell me. Right. So when he walked in the door, he said, I didn't find any Coke. There was just a gram in the grinder. Ah! And there was only $300 cash. Ah! So I go, really? And he goes, yeah. And he started smacking Vella, whatever. Tell us where the Coke is. And Vella goes, I don't know. I don't know. And I said, you know what? Fuck this shit. Right there is when I realized that that dude was robbing me. Yeah. So I go, you know yeah. what? Fuck this. This is your mother's house. You figure out what to do with him. And he goes, you better not leave me here. I'm going to shoot you. And I remember walking towards the door, and I turned around. I go, you don't have the fucking balls to shoot me. And I went out to my car, and I had a gun in the trunk. I had an old 9 millimeter, beautiful one that I had paid like $600 for an Aspen. And for a split <laughs> second, I'm like, I'm going to shoot both these motherfuckers. Because I know what time it is. Jesus. I'm going to go to jail. Right now, I knew I was going to jail. Right at that moment, I knew there was no coming back. I was already in deep. I looked at the clip. I cocked it. And it was like God just stepped in and said, don't just get in your car. And also my mind raced. I go, let me go get the Coke. I'll come back for these dumb fucks. I went. I threw the fucking gun in the trunk. And I went over there. I you went back this, in? I went back to the guy's apartment. Now, oh the doorman to the apartment building had just saw me with Vela coming out. And then Tidwell went over there with his keys. I didn't take the keys from Tidwell. Tidwell thought I was leaving. So I basically went over there. The doorman opened the door for me. I walked to the elevator. I pressed the button. I walked to the floor. And when I made that turn around the elevator, I knew what apartment I was going to. And I just kicked the fucking door down. Bah, bah, the door went flying off the fucking hinges. With no gun? No gun. Just your dick gun? No, I had my gun in my... I put my you gun didn't? in my waist, yeah. I knew the guy wasn't there. He worked as a service guy at some car dealership. Yeah. But my gorilla foot kicked that door and the whole fucking floor hurt it. And I went in and they had one of those ceilings that holds up those tiles that you could push up and hide shit in the tiles. Yeah. Old school. Yep. I jumped up like a gorilla. and I Because I knew it was under one of those tiles. I just didn't have time to look under each one and get a chair. You know right. what I'm saying? I just kicked at the fucking door. It's hanging from the fucking hinges. I mean, I kicked the molding and everything out. Like, I just gorilla kicked that fucking door. That's what adrenaline's called. That's what it's called when somebody's in a pinch. I just gorilla kicked that door. And when you're on coke, too. No, I wasn't on I mean, No, but I mean, you can, you can have that energy. Line. I just done, no, no, no. I had done one little line because I wanted to be alert. Mm -hmm. I had done like one little, little tiny line. I had done nothing. The adrenaline had blown that coke out of the water. Damn. There's no coke involved. I just grabbed that fucking ceiling and ripped it down like a gorilla. And it just, and all of a sudden, boom. I felt the two little things, and they were wrapped in Colombian newspaper, wrapped with Shit. the duct tape. And I basically put it under my arm and walked out of there. And people were in the hallway. Like, people were in the hallway already going, what's going on? And I just walked out. I didn't care if they saw my face or not. I didn't, I didn't would you, what'd you do with the Coke? I went out, I put it in the trunk of my car, and I took off. I made a U-turn, and I hid it under a newspaper bin right on Canyon. You ever open up a newspaper? Yeah. You put your cord and you put yeah. the newspaper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look underneath. There's a little stash. Oh, yeah, underneath. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we'd hide our Coke in the old days. When you deliver the kilo, you don't want nobody to see you, or half a kilo or an ounce, you hit it in the newspaper bins. So when you open up a newspaper That's bin That's why my dad that, always went there. When you open up a newspaper bin from now on, don't look at the newspapers. Look at the bin underneath. <laughs> there, the there's a retirement plan under there. A lot of people didn't know. In the 70s, they'd, hide, <laughs> they'd leave the quarters in there for the week. What? Like they had some people would leave quarters. You just didn't look. You were lazy. Wow. You just pulled one newspaper out, you yeah. fucking dummy. There's, so there's... I hid it under there. I called my buddy at work. I told him to get a car from his dealership, put fake plates on, and take the Coke to Aspen. I said, take a chunk out and drop it off by the house. What do you mean by a chunk? I don't know. Break a fucking piece off the kilo and put it in a bag and drop it off for me. And then he dropped it off. And then he went up to Aspen, and I sat there thinking what well, I was going to tell the cops. And now, what was my next move? I had cash coming back from the kilos. So I was good. I just had to stake it out for two or three days, and I'd have money. Mm -hmm. So I knew the cops would be looking for me when, who, maybe the guy was going to look for me who owned the Coke. Right. I knew somebody was coming to my house. So I said, why worry about it? Let me get this Coke, go crusty to the bar and have a couple cocktails. And I went over to the bar, had a couple cocktails, and I went back to the house and drank. And I got so coked up, I passed out. <laughs> and I woke up on the couch to blazing Brent Hazen, knocking on the fucking door, going, Joey, open the fucking door. The cops are looking for you. You're like, get that 10 minutes. And I 
open the door. I go, what's going on? He goes, fucking, they got this dealership surrounded. Cops are all up there looking for you. What'd you do? And I go, I don't know. I don't know. And because the manager. I don't know. The manager's holding everything. them off. They tell them they don't know what your address is, but they're coming. So I grabbed everything. And me and Brent, I went up to the corner. It was like a, a King Supers. That's a supermarket chain. Yeah. In Boulder. And I went there and I called my girlfriend. I told her what I had done. It backfired. The cops were looking for me. And she's like, I'll come get you. And I checked my pockets and I realized I didn't have my weed with me. I left without my weed. So I walked around the back of the neighborhood, jumped in my house. The oh, cops were sitting God. in front of my house. I jumped in, took my weed in my pipe, and I left. I, and you I went was, back for your weed uh, when the cops were at the house? This is just to let you know the state of mind. That wow. Was but that night before, before I left to get coked up, there was a knock on my door, and it was Tidwell, my partner. Yeah. And he had Vela in the trunk of the car right? He came over and he goes, hey, okay, you got me, but we still got to make money. I need money for that divorce. And he goes, there's a, a, a guy with a pound of hash staying at a hotel up the road. Let's go take that. And I go, no, Jesus. you go take that. You're on your own. And he goes, if you don't fucking come with me or some shit, I'm going to call the cops or whatever the fuck it was. And I just pulled my gun on him. And I said, just leave my property. Don't, don't ever fucking come back here. Because I knew I was already in trouble. I didn't know what was going to happen. And you want me to tell you what happened? Nothing. The guy was driving Vela to the bus station. And it was in a bad neighborhood, but he was driving without his headlights on. And he got pulled over. You would have gotten pulled and the, the fuck said, over. I wouldn't have been in the car. I would have never been in that car. That was his job. Yeah. I don't put myself in a car like that. That's that. That's why I never stole a car. I don't like stolen cars. Because you got no, no alibi. Yeah. You're in the car. You're already in the car. Like you're you're car. you're you're screwed. So when he said license registration, you heard mm, the guy was in the back of the trunk, and they opened up the trunk, and and Vela never ratted. Here's what you guys got to remember: Vela, the victim, never ratted. It was Tidwell that told him everything. So just remember that. That's how. And then I got sentenced, and the whole thing, and then I came out, and I how long? How, what was your sentence? Six years, zero to six. <sighs> No, with, no, with you a, had to work. With a, reconsider, with a reconsideration note. But after 120 days, I could send in a reconsideration note and reconsider my sentence. And did they? Yes. To four years Department of Community Corrections. Was but it the I first still, time you served I, time? Yeah, that was the only time. Wow. And then I came out. I didn't bump into them. I went back to New York. I got into comedy. I got out in 90. I got into comedy in 91. I fell on my ass in 93, and when I came back in 94, I bought coke from him. I bumped into him in a bar in Boulder, and I bought coke from him. Oh, my. And Full I, he, circle. But he was a like, he was so moment. fucked up, and he had a scar on his face. And I go, what happened? He goes, after you kidnapped me, I got kidnapped again. <laughs> he was like in a, you know, he was just in a cycle. Also, yeah. You know, and that's what you guys got to remember. You get stuck was, in that shit. He was in a drug cycle. He was hanging out with major drug dealers. Yeah. People pulling guns and all that shit. He's stuck in he that life. He was just a nice white guy from Boulder. <laughs> you know, he didn't want no fucking problems in nobody. <laughs> he was just a nice white guy from Boulder. Looking for love in all the wrong places. That's it. And then, Did he ever get the money for the divorce? The other guy? The, the other, other dude? They gave him 10 years. <sighs> Wait. He, he confessed and he got more time than you? Because he was on parole. Oh. Uh, he got uh, caught. He got caught with weapons. The guy was in his car. He really had no yeah, alibi. Yeah. He really had no alibi. And then he just ratted on all of us. That was just the funny thing about it. Jeez. That Vela never said a word. If it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?